for love. Sharing your thoughts. Keep. Hello, champion parents, and welcome to Parenting in Rhythm, formerly known as Mommy Talk. The goal of Parenting in Rhythm is to uplift, inform, and engage both mothers and fathers by providing information and resources to inspire positive parental engagement. Take the time to share with your friends and family that Parenting in Rhythm is on Facebook Live now. The show airs live every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Feel free to engage by asking questions or sharing your thoughts. Keep it tasteful. Now it's time to Parents in Rhythm with your host, Dr. Pert, Miss Lisa, and Miss April. Hi, parents. Thank you all for joining in with us today, Parenting in Rhythm, with our very special guest, Miss Beverly Watkins. Um, also, um, of course, we're parenting in rhythm now, but we're formerly known as Mommy Talk. Happy Black History Month, of course. Um, it's March 1st. Even though it's not officially Black History Month, we're still continuing and um, celebrating Black history. Parenting Rhythm is a community-based movement built around conversations, sh shared resources, and empowerment. Based on our research and experience, it is evident that knowledge, support, and parental skills increases empowerment and decreases and or eliminate feelings of despair and even alienation. So today let's talk about the importance of coping and getting through difficult times. Miss Evangelist Beverly M. Watkins, who is a ch champion parent and serves in many capacities. Minister Watkins from Kingdom, Kingdom Covenant Church in Detroit holds a BA in psychology with a minor in English and a master's degree in human resources management. She's currently an executive administrator, purchasing supplier development for Toyota. She is the manager of the Selected of God Gospel Choir from the Emmy-winning Lose Yourself Chrysler 200 Super Bowl, commercial with Eminem and America's Got Talent. Beverly is an active member of Apple Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. She leads various collaborative efforts in the autom automotive industry and plays a huge role in many charities. Welcome, Miss Beverly Watkins. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank, you. thank you. We appreciate you for joining us this evening. Um, just let me say a real quick Black history fact. Most people think of Rosa Parks as the first person to refuse to give up her seat on a Montgomery, Alabama bus. However, there were actually several other women who came before her. One of the women was Claudette Colvin. In March 2nd, 2000, not 2000, Lord. March 2nd, 1955, when the 15 year old school girl refused to move to, to the back of the bus nine months before Rosa Parks' stand that launched the Montgomery bus boycott, Claudette had been studying black leaders like Harriet Tubman in her segregated school. Those conversations led to discussions about the current day Jim Crow laws that we're all experiencing. When the bus driver ordered Claudette to get up, she refused. She said it felt like Sojourner Truth was on one side pushing me down and Harriet Tubby was on the other side pushing her down. She just couldn't get up. Claudette Colvin stand didn't stop there. She was also arrested and thrown in jail and was known for one of the four women who challenged the segregation laws in court in Browder versus Gale, became the court case that successfully overturned the bus segregation laws in both Montgomery and Alabama. Why has Claudette story has largely been forgotten. At the time, the NAACP and other Black organizations felt Rosa Parks made a better icon for the movement than a teenager. But as an adult with the right look, Rosa Parks was also the secretary of the NAACP and was well known and respected. People would associate her with the middle class and that would attract more people for the cause. But the struggle to end segregation was often fought by young people, more than half of which were women. So that's our Black Fist History Fact. Let's celebrate Miss Claudette Colvin for being a pioneer of the Montgomery bus boycott. Woohoo, all right. Yes, much respect to Miss Claudette Colvin. Okay, well, I, I'm excited, so excited to have 
Evangelist, and she said, do not be formal, but I just have to say it one time, um, Evangelist uh, Beverly Watkins. I have to say it because um, she lives up to this title. It's not just a title for show or anything like that. She uh, certainly lives up to the title, but I'm not gonna be long-winded. I'm gonna start with you, uh, Beverly. Thank you so much for agreeing to come with us and come chat with us, welcome. Thank you so much, Lisa and Dr. Kurt and uh, April. I really appreciate the opportunity to share with you guys this evening. Yes, so we all just delve, delve right into it. Um, I like um, Ms. April said earlier that um, although Black History Month is um, over, we must uh, continue the celebration and what better way to uh, begin March uh, by speaking to a phenomenal um, woman of color, uh, Ms. Beverly Watkins. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I, I know you guys read the uh, bio, but I'm more than my bio. I'm actually a mother. This is parenting and rhythm. So I am a mom. My son uh, will be 24 on this Saturday. So um, happy birthday, yes, Malik. Yes, yes, happy birthday, Malik. Yeah, happy and birthday. I hope, I hope he don't choke me for talking about his business tonight. You know, <laughs> he can be fussing like, mom, you told that? Yep, I'm going to tell him. <laughs> but um, yes, I'm a mom and a very proud mom too. You know, sometimes, you know, our children, you know, grow up and, you know, go off to adulthood and, you know, all we have are the older stories, but you're always making memories with your children. So I'm, I'm still making memories with my son. And so I'm very proud of him. Yeah. Um, about me, more about me. I am an entertainment manager besides being an executive administrator, besides being, you know, a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated with my sorority sister here, Lisa. And I, I am much more than that. I um, have several businesses. You know, I was taught, you know, growing up, you have multiple streams of income. So I'm a little bit more than just that manager of that choir that, that was on the, on the TV or the group that's singing on at the church. You know, I'm a little bit more than that. So I'm just, I'm just glad to be in my skin. There was times where I wasn't that, that excited about being who I was. It's like, Lord, help me through. But, you know, that's why we're here to talk tonight about how to get through those trying times. Absolutely. And um, that was one of the things that kind of really, you know, I remember when I called you because I was in the car one day, like, hold on, wait a minute, call Beverly right now. Like the spirit just came over me. And um, so I know that you are uh, very humble, very humble, um, but very uh, wise, very wise. Um, so although uh, Malik has grown, can you share what a typical day was like, uh, it was or is, because they never leave, they leave the home, but they don't leave the home. So what's a typical day um, like for you as a champion parent? Well, um, I can flash back, not too far back even, you know, just in high school, because that was a really trying period for us. Um, his father, um, unfortunately, passed away in 2014, and it was right before the beginning of his senior year of high school. So, you know, it, I've had some really tumultuous days and times with him, but an average day was getting up, making sure he was up. And a lot of times, you know, in the morning, I try to get those last five minutes in <laughs> before I really have to get up. So sometimes I would be scrambling, you know, but thank God, you know, I was doing meal prep long before they were talking about meal prep. So we had things ready for lunch or whatever it was. So that was, that was the beginning of the day, getting in the car, getting him to school before he was able to drive, you know? And even if I flash back a little earlier when he was in preschool, you know, it, we just had a system, we had a routine. We had to have that set routine, getting him off to school and then making sure I was keeping up with all of his events on my calendar. Mm -hmm. So I had a mm -hmm. calendar for me and a calendar for him, but then I had it merged. So I had a calendar at work that had everything on it, even though it was separated in different all the calendars, it merged it and I was able to keep up with everything and not miss too many things. Um, so getting off the school, making sure I was talking to the teachers, if I had anything to do to follow up with the teachers. I was also involved in the PTA, which kept me in the loop and the PTO in, in his other school. It kept me in the loop. I had a position on the PTO board. So I was able to stay, you know, pretty close to what was going on just in case he didn't tell me or he didn't show me the notes or I didn't get the message or I didn't get the email. I was still in the loop. So even though I was, you know, busy at work, I still made that time to make sure that I was going to be involved in his school in some kind of way to be able to keep up with his schedule and his life and manage 
what he was doing, what he was exposed to, and what the teachers were talking about. So a typical day, getting off to school, getting, getting whatever extracurricular activities out of the way, getting home, getting dinner on time, as much as possible, not trying to eat late, make sure homework was done. You know, and sometimes it was a struggle. I was up because I had my own homework. I actually went to school as a, a well, went back to school later in my adult life. So I was in um, University of Michigan driving back and forth while he was yet in middle school. You know, so it was it was all about that management of that calendar, all about that time game. And my typical day could start as early as seven o'clock and it wouldn't end till probably midnight. But it was going to be worth it in the end. Wow. And you said some key things, you know, um, organizing your time, you know, that time management and um, keeping track of your schedule, his schedule. Um, it's about, um, you know, putting things together. Um, so, you know, raising children, you know, and I'm hearing it and I've, I've experienced it. All of us ladies have, you know, raising children can be uh, trying, hence the reason for parenting and rhythm. You know, um, and the reason for today's uh, topic, you know, so can you share with us um, a time where you had to get Malik through um, some uh, trying times? Yeah, I kind of alluded to a little bit earlier. The most trying time, I think, was when his father died right before his senior year started. Um, it was a very quick, sudden illness. Um, though we were divorced, you know, he was still in his life and he was diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer and liver cancer, July 25th and April, I'm sorry, August 24th, he was gone, literally 30 days. And um, my son just, he, he was handling it okay, you know, but, but he, it's your father. Yeah. This, is, this is your male influence, this is your father. And so um, having that happen before, you know, he was going to experience the, the big joy of graduating from high school. And, you know, he was playing football. He was in varsity football team. And, you know, just having all this happen right before, you know, my dad won't see me go to prom or my dad won't be here for my graduation. You know, it, it was tough on him. It was really tough on him. And the one thing, of course, you know, as a minister, we fell back on prayer, but we also fell back on our support system. You That's gotta right. have a good solid support system. And yeah. included in that support system, I reached out for um, any kind of um, therapist or somebody that could help during that time because we don't always have all the answers and that's okay. You gotta find somebody else just so long as you know somebody else with the answer. You know, reach yeah. out to somebody else, use your, your support system, use your village. You cannot do this thing by yourself. I couldn't handle, you know, some things about being a, a male. So I made sure he had other male influences in his life during that time that were there to support him through that. You know, they yeah. actually, a lot of his, um, his father's friends came through at that time to support, you know, they were like, look, we got you. If, if it's school, if it's, you need to go buy a suit, you need to go, you know, do something that, you know, maybe you don't want to do with your mom or have a discussion with us, you know, instead of having with your mom, they were there for him even though sometimes yeah. he didn't want to talk to them, but at least they were there, you know, yeah. and they were make, extending their hand and reaching out, you know, trying to let him know that he's not in this by himself. Even though his father had transitioned, he still had people that loved him and cared about him besides his immediate family. Because sometimes, you know, we strain our immediate family a lot as our yeah. support system, but we have other places to reach out to get assistance and to get support when we need it. That's why we have friends. That's why, you know, we have extended family. We yeah. had to reach out to them a lot. So if I could tell anyone anything, don't be afraid to reach out beyond your immediate borders. Reach mm -hmm. out to that extended family, those grandmothers and those great aunties. And, you know, don't just reach out during the holidays. You know, they're yeah. there throughout the year. And that's what helps us get through having a first, a, fr a firm foundation in our salvation, being able to pray together and being able to stand on God's word, but then having our support system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's important. I'm so glad you brought up uh, Village because we are always, and it's funny because I, one of the questions I did want to ask you about um, a village and how to, you know, but you said it. Um, and we always talk about that village and how important it is. And, and some parents do not know how to reach out. They don't know, you know, they feel, I've been in that situation where I felt, I have a big family, 
you know, but I've been in a situation where I didn't really, I don't want to burden anyone. You know, people feel that way. And I like that you said that. Don't be afraid because you'll be surprised at, um, you'll be surprised who helps you. And, and so my next question was, you know, how did you as a caretaker, how did you as the, the champion parent get through? But you answer kind of, sort of, if you want to elaborate a little bit more, um, because we do, we know that the caretakers take care of those in need, but who takes care of the caretakers? You know, who, how, how did you get through? Right. Again, back, like you said, to the village. Yeah. I, he had a village, but I had one too. Yes. You know, so it's and not- And different villages sometimes, yes. Exactly, exactly. And I had girlfriends say, no, you know, let Malik go ahead, go with his friends. We're going to go out this time. You know, you're going to meet us, even if it was just for an hour or whether it was something I already had planned to do. You know, they met me there. You know, so I was able to have someone to talk to, vent, whatever, you know, because sometimes you, you, you feel so heavy for your children and you can't take that, that hurt from them. You want to take it from yeah. them, you know, but mm -hmm. you can't. And so that hurts you. And there were many times, you know, even though, you know, I knew I was praying and God gave me assurance, you know, you still have to walk that thing out. I'm a firm believer that faith without works is dead. So you can get on your knees yeah. and pray. But after you finish praying, get up and start doing something. You know, you gotta, you gotta do something so God can help you yes. along. And That's so right. what, what I did, you know, I said, okay, so, you know, um, to my sorority sisters, I didn't have, um, my sorority sisters then, but I have some other sisters and I was like, okay, let's, let's do this. You know, let's, let's, let's go out. Let's, my mental health is on the verge here, you know, and I had to, to, you know, make sure I was okay, because if you're not okay, you can't help somebody else. You know, you you giving out of an empty place. You can't give out of an empty cup. Once mm -hmm. it's empty, it's gone. And you are tearing yourself and putting yourself in a position to fall and fall hard. So you got to be able to replenish. You got to be able to refresh. You got to be able to go to see your sisters. If they for real, you know, and the times when people say, girl, call me when you need me. Well, I'm calling you. Or auntie, I'm calling you. Or, you know, best friend, I'm calling you. You know, I, I, I'm not I'm not ashamed. Because I'm telling you, I I don't want to be in that place where people say, "Well, why didn't you call me? Why, you know, you could have come to me." All those yeah. times, you know, I've I've been with you. You you didn't think you could call me, so I made sure to test the waters of who was there for me, you know, and made okay. sure. Okay, if if they didn't respond or it wasn't the uh, the answer that I was looking for as far as the support that I needed, then I was like, okay, I know what what column to put them in. And that mm. was okay. I, I knew who my friends were. I That's knew who my family was. So it, it's okay. Sometimes you have to test a friendship. You got to test, yeah. you know, God puts us to test. Why can't we, you know, test, test, test the waters, you know, of who said it for us. You know, you got to test that sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and no better way to test that is a trial mm -hmm. and see who's going to be there to help hold your arms up and support you. That's right. yeah, I think that's really important, like, as you say, to um, allow that support village to uh, help you. And support comes in different forms, even just somebody just showing up to a gathering, um, to an event, or perhaps just sitting down with you, you know. And so I remember when my um, father died. And I think that for me, it was like drawing in on that inner strength. I think when we go through times, you know, it shows us how strong we are. So I just want to encourage the champion parents out there to draw on that inner strength because it's in you and listen to that voice. Mm -hmm. And then one, one other thing that helped too. James H. Cole, they made my daddy look good, okay? He yeah. looked good, okay? I was that really, really helped because I remember going to my grandmother's funeral and she didn't look so good. But, it, and, and I was having anxiety about that. Like, I wonder how my dad's going to look. That played a huge role. So for me, champion parent to support my children because my daughter was really close to my father um mm -hmm. I just asked her you know how she's feeling how she's coping is there anything that she needs me to do and I promise you by the grace of God 
When I say she was able to keep going and navigate through school and everything, I would just say, and just, just go through life on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I just thank God that she was able to draw on that inner strength inside of her. That's mm. such a good point because, you know, you, you put so much into your children and you wonder how will they be able to stand, you know, and that, that strength that they're getting is from stuff you put in them. It's from the church you took them to. It's from the time you spent with them talking in the car because talking in the car was our biggest thing on the way to school. We would, we would debrief about, okay, what's going to happen today? And then after after uh, school or after whatever it was we're coming from, we debrief again. You know, and all those times of, of connecting and pouring into your children and to be able to draw on the stuff that you put in them and that strength that they have, that's that's the best feeling for a mama to mm -hmm. see that you actually did that that part right. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, sometimes we, we don't get it right all the time, but when you, when you see your children standing strong, you're like, my baby did that. Okay. I get you know, so I, I get excited. I get excited when I hear some of the word come back that I put in my child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. apparently you there is a calling. There was a calling on your life. There is a calling. So how how did you recognize your calling? Girl, this question here. <laughs> so <laughs> I I was praying, I was in college, I was at the University of Michigan, and my brother and I had an apartment off campus, and I was in the, in the room by myself praying. And I was just asking God, I was like, God, what do you want me to do? All my life, I, you know, been in church, you know, but I, you know, I sang in the choir, you know, I was in the community choir, you know, choir, music wasn't new to me, none of that. So, you know, you, you just grow up, you're doing that kind of thing in the church where I came from. But I knew that there was something more. I was just, I was searching within myself. I was like, God, there's something missing. There's something more that you want me to do besides just be in a choir. And the choir is good. And I love it. And I'm still going to do it. But I know there's something else. And I heard clear as day. If I ain't never heard nothing from God, I heard clear as day that day. He, he called out a scripture to me. He said, mm. 2 Timothy 4 and 5. And I was like, okay, I just heard a scripture. Let me go to the Bible and look the scripture up. I had never read the scripture before in my life. To my knowledge, I hadn't heard anybody preach about it or nothing. Went to that scripture and it said, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. And I stopped right there. I was like, do the work of an evangelist? You call me to be an evangelist? Lord, for real? I was like, okay. And I thought about it. And an evangelist shares the gospel ministers deliverance to people and I have been doing sh the sharing all along mm -hmm. you know and and didn't didn't even realize that that calling had been on life prior to that 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 conversation with God mm -hmm. I knew I was doing what he wanted me to do already by talking to people and being a witness to people but I didn't know formally that I was an evangelist until that moment and then I looked back and I was like God, you know what? You're right. Like you're telling God he's right. You know he's right. He's right all the time. Mm -hmm. But I was like, God, you're right. Do the work of the evangelist. So, you know, I, I went and told my pastor. And then, of course, different things started to happen where I had to preach and different things. But oftentimes, some people are called to ministry. And preaching in the pulpit may not be exactly what you're going to yeah. do, even though you have that ministerial call. Yeah. You mm -hmm. might be called outside of the church to mm -hmm. talk to people and to minister to people. You might be called to the business, the administrative side of the church, being a minister and having that administration gift to be able to administer to the people inside of the church. So it's not always about preaching, though I have preached, but I think right now it's about prayer. A lot of times people come in confidence and want to pray or, you know, people are looking for just an encouraging word and God will send somebody to me. <coughs> it's, it's all kinds of ways mm -hmm. that we minister. And I, I, I just, I just, at that moment, I, it just, the light came on and I realized, okay, God, this is, this is definitely what I'm supposed to do. Wow. And again, here you go. Answering the question before I even get to it. <laughs> yeah. So listen, so I was going to ask, how can somebody else recognize, you know, their calling, but I mean, you said it in, in so many words that even, you know, we're all called to do something. We're all called to do something. 
you know, and it's like, how do you recognize, you know, what you're called to do? And like you said, you know, just because you're called to do something don't mean you're called to do something in the church. You may be called to do something. We all minister to people in different um, ways, you know, mm -hmm. different ways. Um, so is there a need uh, for, you know, and here it is, I'm, I'm going to ask the question anyway, because I feel like you asked, you answered this as well. But is there a need, because um, I think it's a different way we could take it too. Is there a need for evangelizing in the community? Like what, what is the need um, for evangelizing in the community? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And it's applicable for right now, because we've come through this, this pandemic to this mm -hmm. point now and people are still hurting people yeah. are still needing somebody to say something to help them make it not even to the just the next day help them make it to the next hour and evangelizing in the community absolutely we still do need that we need that we need to be sensitive to each other's needs and be able to administer that deliverance by the words that are coming out of our mouth mm. and and those words can can either the, the Bible says, you know, the power of life and death is in your tongue. Those words can either heal somebody or hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. And we choose to use our words to, to heal somebody. Have our words seasoned with grace and love. Be there for somebody when they need that word of encouragement. Be there when somebody wants to pray. Be there when they just want to talk and have somebody listening to them. Yes. You know, it, evangelizing is so simple now, too, because virtually you can go to anybody's church anywhere, hear anybody's sermon at any time of day or night, because everybody that still ministers is online. So you can find a sermon to encourage you, and you can send a sermon to somebody. You can share just as quick, quickly as we share, you know, everything else. We share our memes, our TikToks. We need to share some of these scriptures and, and some of these, these sermons that we didn't heard that have encouraged us. You know, yeah. there's some stuff I've heard, not just from Bishop Jakes. I, I love Bishop Jakes. I love Sarah Jakes. I, I love my boy down in Atlanta, uh, Pastor Jamal Harrison Bryant. But there's some, some other stuff that maybe my sorority sister shared on her page. Maybe it was a scripture. Maybe it was inspiration. Something that, that touched my heart. If it's touching, if it's what's from the heart, will reach the heart. And if it's touching my heart, it's going to touch somebody else's heart. And I share that. Sharing that good news. Sharing not, we, we sometimes we get kind of, caught up in the religious aspect mm -hmm. of, of, of having a relationship with God. He don't want us to be religious. He wants us to have our own personality and to be able to share whatever he's given us. If that's an encouraging word, if it's a poem, if it's a song, if it's dancing with somebody on Zoom, if whatever it might be that's going to encourage somebody and turn them away from the dark places that we have in our lives. That's what he wants. It's not that hard. Yes. It's not that hard. So yes, evangelizing is, is still very important. Well, so well, you... well, well, <laughs> Girl, I know, I like I'm getting chills. I'm like, I feel like I'm in church. But how do you know? Like, how do you know? Um, because I'm sure even in the beginning of your ministry, this may have like kind of weighed on you a little bit. And now I think that you you spread your word and you, you're confident with it. But how do you know that your message is well received? How do you know that the peoples, because I know you can tell we're receiving your message. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. So and how do you, you know when your message is? <laughs> you can tell. You, just like, you know, I see your faces. You can tell, but the biggest thing, the Bible says that you know them by the fruit. You know, they're going to know you by your love and you, you'll bear fruit. And I'm telling you, when people begin to change, you can see when people are beginning to change. People will tell you, I, I listened to something that you said, and you know what I did? I made a decision to do X, Y, and Z, and you know that worked for me. You know, people will come back and tell you. And then or somebody might post it and like, you know, I heard this or I saw this or, you know, such and such sent me this and you will know your work will bear fruit. It's not going to go out into the world void. The word comes out and it has a specific purpose for something that it's supposed to accomplish and it accomplishes that thing and it comes, you find out, you will find out. And then of course the spirit will let you know. Your spirit will let you know when you have really given, given out of yourself, out of your heart and given what God has given you. And that person, if, if they light up, if they change, if they, if they smiling and they weren't smiling or if they were crying or you cried with them and then y'all came to a resolve at the end of that crying, 
that they had some strength, you know, but it's by the fruit, you know, that comes from it. If you're not bearing fruit, he gonna prune that tree to make sure you bearing fruit. He gonna send you through something that's gonna help somebody else. So that thing that you just went through, it ain't just for you, it's for somebody else too. And that thing is gonna bear fruit because you're sharing that. So like we're sharing a forum here today, absolutely, this is gonna bear fruit. April, Lisa, Christina, y'all have fruit that y'all been putting, y'all been putting out seeds into the world and you don't just get back, when you plant a seed, you don't just get that one piece of fruit, you get a whole tree. Yeah. You get a whole harvest. Mm -hmm. So all these seeds that we're planting, this stuff comes back to us in a harvest. Mm. Like that. How many of y'all bear fruit out there? Come on now. How many? Right. Are you sauce, strawberries, fruit? cherries. Here you go. You name it. <laughs> Jackfruits. <laughs> Jackfruit. <laughs> Listen, when is the book? This one, one of your questions, but when is the book coming out? It's so funny. I know you got a book, and I and I'm 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 sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but I know you got a book with uh even with some daily inspiration. Cause I know it's it's like here you go. I know Lisa, you got it. Lisa, you are a confirmation from God today. You know that I'm gonna tell you why. Just today, I was thinking about a question that you were gonna ask me. And the Lord dropped into my spirit, not just because I'm working on a women's conference and I'm pulling different women together mm -hmm. to be able to minister to the whole woman. Mm -hmm. The title of my conference is Mary and Martha, Balance mm -hmm. for Today's Woman. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason why it's Mary and Martha is because, Mary, well, we know the story about Mary and Martha sitting with Jesus, where, you know, Mary was sitting with Jesus while Martha was working in the kitchen. And mm -hmm. Martha was getting everything prepared and getting, getting all the guests set up and everything. And Mary was just sitting there kicking it. And she's like, Mary ain't helping me. You know, Jesus, get her to help me. And he was telling her, basically, look, Martha, Mary getting the good part. She talking to me. She getting the wisdom. She getting the good part. But we need both. We do we need both. We need to be able to prepare. We need to be able to organize. But then we also be able to, need to sit down, get that wisdom, kick it, be able to it, relate with other people. And so the book is definitely going to come from this conference. So you got it here exclusively. This is the first day I'm ever talking about the conference open. And this is the first day I'm talking about the book. The book will come. So thank you for being a confirmation to me today. Mm -hmm. Yay. Okay. So that's, that's uh, one of your uh, special projects. As well. That's the next question. Wait, so, uh, um, one of the, um, in, uh, the um, in the comments, B. Blake Watkins said, I'm her counsel. You need to check with me about when her book drops. Send all of Beverly Monique's inquiries to my inbox. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. And, and that's what I'm glad, he, I'm glad he chimed in because that's what I wanted to tell you guys. There is safety in the multitude of counsel. Mm -hmm. That is so true. As we get in our village together, as we're, we're leaning on our support system, absolutely, there is safety in the multitude of counsel. Thanks, Brian. Mm -hmm. thanks brian we sure look we sure will reach out to you amen sir yes yeah, we he will. also said he enjoyed talk, talking about um the fruit preacher this is better than jake's today <laughs> thank you, oh, thank you. <laughs> and yeah. we also have nadia muslim who said hello she's on our previous show Danya. yes so thank you uh thank you all champion parents uh for chiming in uh we only have uh, Beverly for a little while longer. So if you have any questions, you better hurry up, hurry up, please. Um, so are you are you working on any other uh, special projects um, that are, well, I guess, I don't know, they could uh, community-based or um, personal. Are you working on any other uh, projects? Well, definitely always working on something. And that is with the groups that I, I manage. Um, God's Way group is a quartet group. They just did a recording over the weekend. So that's going to be coming out pretty soon. They did um, uh, just for it to be broadcast live, of course, on Facebook. Um, the Choir of Selective God is still, we still around. They've been around for 20 years. Um, they have a wonderful following of folks that are waiting for their next recording and concert or whatever it's going to be. So SOG is getting ready to get back together. So we're working on that because we, sometimes people are like, okay, are we really going to get back to church? Are we really going to have these big gatherings anymore? 
but trust me, we're going to have something for the folks that's ready to go back to church and for the folks that's not too, you know, like, mm -mm, ain't getting no vaccine, ain't going to church, you know what, you know, I need to stay home, yeah. you know. So we got something for them too. So working on that with the Selective God Fire as well. And then just working, supporting businesses. I'm actually helping other businesses apply for some of these grants that are coming out and some of these PPP loans and things. You know, I actually take in um, referrals for those and help people find those grants and helping them write, write you know, the right application. So. Okay. So before I get to the, um, the last uh, question, I just really have to, again, um, say you are a, you are a phen phenomenal woman. Um, you are a woman of many, many talents. And I can remember the one uh, cabaret where we had the contest to decorate the table and your table won. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, because I think you also, at one point, you did uh, decorating. You did, uh, what is it called? Event planning. You Event planning, thank you. You did yeah. event planning. And it's just like, God, how do you find the time, you know? And Yeah, I, I, I do. I do come out of retirement a little bit and still do some event planning. I just did my um, goddaughter's engagement party, um, which happened last week. So it just depends, you know, on what it is, you know, and, and I've worked the time. If I'm, if, if I'm told in enough time, you know, to be able to plan it, you know, get it on my calendar, make it fit, I'll make it fit. Cause I yeah. enjoy that. I really enjoy that. Putting things together and making them nice and pretty. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, I do. Absolutely. Look, even, even though I hate it when, you know, I mean, not hate it, but you know, when you won, I'm gonna say congratulations again. You know, I sound like a little hater over there, but your table was good. Yes, it was beautiful. I was like, dang, they was. <laughs> but um, so do you have any final words of encouragement uh, for our champion uh, parents and our viewers? I do. I do. And the final word is be good to yourself. Be good to yourself. Don't take on additional stress by sitting up thinking about what you didn't do right, what, mm -hmm. what you could have, should have, would have that has no place in your life. Don't worry about it. The best part about it is God knew the, the end from the beginning. So he wrote your story from back, back from the end from to the beginning. So everything that you have going on in your life, it's not a surprise to God. And, mm -hmm. and don't, 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 don't take it too hard. Take it as a lesson. If you happen to miss it this time, that's okay. Dust yourself off, get up, Mama, Dad, whoever, get up, get 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 yourself up. You can get up. You if you can get if you can look up, you can get up. Look up and get up. Be good to yourself. Take take self care as a priority. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself. If it's walking around your house, if you don't have a treadmill, walk around your house. You mm -hmm. know that's 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 getting your steps in. You know, if, if it's if it's changing the way you eat, change some things a little bit at a time, but change the way you eat. If it's spending time with your children, carve that time out, make that priority, turn your phone off. My son had to tell me that back back when we when he was like at the eighth grade. He told me, he said, Mom, we, we can't have our phones at the table. We're not gonna have our phones and let's just talk. And listen to your children. They will tell you what what, what they need from you. If you're listening, let's be active listeners and listen to our children. They're reaching out and giving us signals and signs all the time. Even though the ones that, that you think ain't really talking, they're giving us signs. So listen, so be an active listener, take self-care seriously, be good to yourself, eliminate coulda, woulda, shoulda. I just have one quick uh, question to what you said, um, you know, with the kids and they're, you know, whatever, listening. Um, and I'm going to tell you why I said whatever, because my son just took, oh, my Melaleuca soap, honey. You know, I ordered a lot of the Melaleuca soap. He took the soap. I got the pink grapefruit and the mango, honey. He cut them up and glued them together separately. Not glued them. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to take a picture of it later. He took, cut them and he, he, um, he was decorating. I said, well, my son, not my, not my Melaleuca not soap. soap. Not my good soap. You know, he cut them and, and, and whatever you call it, mended them together. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, I know it's creativity, but dang, sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> thank you so much um, for uh, hanging with us. This has uh, truly been a pleasure. 
Yes, it has. Uh, Minister uh, Watkins, what you said really resonated with me. Be good to yourself. I think that is just very important. That's one of the messages I'm going to send out uh, to my students tomorrow. I really appreciate the uh, words of wisdom that you share with us. And like I said, thank you for that because I started thinking, you know what, be good to yourself. I really appreciate that. So on this day in Black history, we thank you, Minister Be Beverly, for your awesome representation as a woman of God. Thank you for sharing awesome information regarding champion parenting, evangelization, sisterhood, and simply a super cool guest. You are awesome. Although this is the end of February and Black History Month, we must continue the conversations, the celebrations and the traditions. Black history happens all year. We cannot solely rely on certain entities, facilities or institutions to nurture our children with Black history facts. Champion parents make this pledge with us to keep Black history alive all year long. And I know you all can't wait to bang June 10th out again for 2021. Remember champion parents, if you are interested in chatting with us, feel free to uh, contact us on our website and share what works for you while successfully raising children. We are in this together as champion parents. We like to take this time to thank all of our viewers today for tuning in. Be safe, wear your mask, use your sanitizer, and remember to practice effective social distancing. And as Minister Watkins said, be good to yourself. Until next time. Champion parents, thank you for tuning in to Parenting in Rhythm. We certainly appreciate your support and hope you learn practical parenting information that you can apply to your life. If you are interested in chatting with us and want to share parenting tips, or if there is a specific topic you would like 3R to address on the show, please feel free to contact us by visiting our website. Please visit and check out our other social media platforms to connect with us, and tune in every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Champion parents, until next time, continue to provide and support your children.